Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil, and this is MB12 for Thursday, May 10th, 2012, broadcasting from the Cable 12 studios on Robinson Road. In news tonight, a host of cabinet ministers sworn in this afternoon. The official leader of the opposition unanimously voted in. Did the Democratic National Alliance play a part in the outcome of the election? The Christian Council reacts to government's proposed referendum on gambling and remembering those who lost their lives in the HMBS Flamingo tragedy. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. Your MB12 starts right now. with yesterday's promise to immediately identify members of his team to deal with the issue of crime, Prime Minister Perry Christie announced a Minister of National Security and an Attorney General this afternoon. He also named six other ministers to deal with the financial, tourism and education sectors. They were all sworn in at Government House today. Nikia DeVoe tells us who they are in this report. One by one, the eight ministers took their oaths at Government House today. Prime Minister Perry Christie said that these particular ministerial appointments show the urgency that his new government attaches to the issues that challenge the country. Crime, the economy, and education. I am acutely conscious that some of my appointments may give rise to questions. But I am even more acutely conscious that the enormous crisis that engulfs us at this very hour on the crime front and in all areas of the economy, especially tourism, obliges me to put the urgent needs of the nation above any concern of popularity. My ministerial appointments today therefore reflect the very high premium that I have placed on prior experience and a proven track record in leading the war against crime and in leading the campaign to revive our declining fortunes in tourism. I need ministers who can hit the ground running. Arguably the most highly anticipated appointment of the new Christie administration was that of Minister of National Security. And with four murder records over the past five years, Dr. Bernard Nottage will have his work cut out for him. Fifty murders have been recorded so far this year, five of them since Monday. This time last year, there were 45 murders. Dr. Nottage told us how his ministry plans to tackle the vexing crime problem. My approach is going to be multifactorial. We've already indicated that we're going to reintroduce urban renewal, and a lot of people get upset with that because they feel that we think it's a panacea. But it's not that we think it's a panacea, but that we think it is one of those community efforts that have proven, has proven itself in, in the previous five-year administration of Mr. Christie. And now we want to improve on that. And over the course of the next month or so, you'll see us introducing a, a, a number of new strategies, some of which were not detailed during our election campaign. Uh, it's it's going to be a hard, difficult slog. But what we need is the cooperation of the public. I, I In my constituency, I have a personal relationship with the pastors. I think the church has a major role to play. Um, I think that we have to find other leadership whether it's in the business sector, whether it's in the youth mentorship sector, and so forth, in, in order to have the impact that the community needs. All eyes will be focused on the new Minister of National Security, especially after the PLP relentlessly accused the Ingram administration of failing to effectively address the situation and focused on the number of murders under the Ingram administration during its campaign. Do you feel any pressure in this position? No, I, I accept the situation as it is. We, we are, as the Prime Minister said in the ceremony, in a crisis. Anytime you can have five murders in 48 hours, that is a multi-crisis. But it's not going to be solved overnight. We are fooling ourselves if we think because we became the government, it's going to change overnight. It's not. 
Um, that's why he said we're going to be very aggressive, though. In his party's campaign, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram focused on what he called deficiencies of Mr. Christie's leadership from 2002 to 2007. Ingram said it took a week for Christie to name an attorney general. Well, today, Alison Maynard Gibson was once again appointed attorney general, senator, and minister of legal affairs. Prevention, detection and prosecution, and rehabilitation. We have a comprehensive plan and all aspects of it will be implemented immediately by various ministers. Of course, my mandate is the Attorney General and the centerpiece of that is swift justice along with witness and protection and other programs. The Bahamian people know of Project Safe Bahamas, it will be implemented and we expect that the people who have given us this mandate will walk this journey with us to restore safety in our homes and on our streets. Obi Wilscombe is now the Minister of Tourism. Jerome Fitzgerald assumes the title of Minister of Education, Science and Technology. As we revealed yesterday, Michael Halkidas is the State Minister for Finance, while Ryan Pinder will be responsible for the Ministry of Financial Services. Damian Gomez is now the Junior Minister of Legal Affairs, and former police officer Keith Bell is now Minister of State for National Security. The remaining ministers will be sworn in here at Government House tomorrow at 4 p.m. The Prime Minister says he intends to keep his promise that his full cabinet will be assembled by Friday. Reporting for NB12, I'm Nikia DeVoe. The government also announced today that former Minister of State for Finance James Smith will be engaged as a special consultant with the Ministry of Finance and former Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and former Ambassador Clifford Butch Scavella has been engaged to spearhead the setting up of a new body that will seek to more efficiently coordinate intelligence gathering and joint strategic planning among the various law enforcement agencies. Well, as you've probably already heard by now, Dr. Hubert Minnis has been chosen as the leader-elect of the Free National Movement. This evening, he was handed his instruments of appointment at Government House. Jasmine Bonamy was at party headquarters last night where she spoke with FNM candidates about their new leader. She filed this report. For the third time in the party's extensive history, the Free National Movement has a new leader after a landslide defeat in the 2012 general election. Last night, Dr. Hubert Minnis was voted in as head of the FNM. The party's MP-elect in conjunction with the FNM Central Council voted Dr. Minnis in during a private meeting last night. NB12 spoke to the former health minister moments after he was appointed to the top post. Dr. Minnis says his first order of business is to investigate claims of victimization at the hands of the Progressive Liberal Party, as well as seek to get more answers from the PLP regarding its leader's involvement with the Bahamas Petroleum Company. For our part, we pledge to work with the government in the best interests of Bohemian people. At times, this may require that we oppose what we believe is not in the national interest. We will oppose, we will not oppose for the sake of opposing, but we will oppose without hesitation and vigorously what we believe is harmful to the general welfare and common good of Bohemian people. The vote came two days after former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram resigned as leader of the party and announced he will not take his seat in the House of Assembly when it opens on May 23rd. Ingram resigned after suffering a crushing defeat at the polls. His resignation will become effective at the party's convention on May 26th. Dr. Minnis thanked former Prime Minister Ingram for his outstanding service to the country. Fellow FNMs weighed in on Dr. Minnis' appointment moments after he was voted in, saying they were confident he could steer the party during rough times. Well, I think Dr. Minnis has, over the last five years, proven himself to be a very capable and organized man. I think um, he is well able to sit as our leader of the opposition and leader of this party. He's a man of many, many talents. It gives us um, the opportunity to reevaluate and regroup. And I believe that, you know, we will get through this um, devastating period and we'll once again um, take over the reins of government. After a rough election period um, and a rough decision really by the Bahamian people that we needed to be very quick with our actions, um, be able to be united in terms of, of, of our focus moving forward. And Dr. Minnis definitely brings that quality of leadership that the FNM needs uh, to make our transition into opposition and then back into government a smooth one. I think the party 
is very focused. The party had a very clear, concise plan for what they had intended to do in governance for the next five years. So um, they will still be pursuing those policies. Um, Dr. Minnis was very much involved in, being, uh, in the architecture of those policies. And so he will be one of those persons that is aptly suited to implement them. Uh, even from a point of opposition, a good opposition is still a part of governance. We have a long road and I think we, are, we have some rebuilding to do, we have some restructuring to do. And I think Dr. Minnis is the right man to make sure that we, we get those things done. But I think his team is also a good team. We have a good team surrounding him to make sure that we could be more nimble, that we could be agile, that we could be um, on, the, on the pulse of the, the nation to be able to, to, to address the needs of the people and to really meet the needs of the people moving forward. Now the FNM is still without a deputy leader. The party is expected to appoint someone to that position during their convention later this month. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. The former Prime Minister was also at party headquarters earlier yesterday, meeting with campaign managers and current and former FNM members of Parliament. FNM Chairman Carl Bethel says the group spent much of the morning discussing the way forward for the party and to thank Mr. Ingram for his 30 plus years of public service. We had a, a good discussion about both the election and the way forward. Um, we've arrived at a number of um, points on which there's a great deal of consensus. A lot of time was spent giving personal thanks and congratulations to the former Prime Minister, our party leader. And many people gave personal reflections, really saying how much they have benefited from and appreciated all that he has done, not only for themselves personally, but also for our country. As one person said it, he has stamped his work upon the history of the Bahamas in works that will last hundreds of years. And I think there's no question that the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram has indeed had an enormous impact on our country. A man so far ahead of his time that in this instance the voters didn't catch up with us. Bethel says moving forward, another important project for the party is determining what went wrong for the FNM. From early indications, Bethel says it appears the FNM could not win the support of undecided voters. Bethel adds that the FNM also seemed unpopular among female voters. He says the party hopes to learn more after an in-depth study of election 2012. And the Democratic National Alliance may not have won any seats in Monday's general election. However, some political observers believe the barely one-year-old party did so well that it may have helped to determine who won and lost the election. Tonight, Vonnie Toot takes a look at the DNA factor. In the months leading up to the May 7th general election, some political analysts questioned which political party the Democratic National Alliance would hurt more, the Free National Movement or Progressive Liberal Party. Some people have suggested that the FNM was more negatively impacted. Official election results reveal that the DNA fared so well in some constituencies that had the number of votes cast for the DNA gone to the FNM in at least a dozen races, the outcome of the general election would have been much different. The DNA got more than 13,000 votes. It more than covers the 10,000 votes the FNM would have needed to perhaps defeat the PLP. However, College of the Bahamas professor Dr. Ian Strawn feels the two major political parties were equally impacted. I read some comments by George Smith that suggest that in particularly places like Bamboo Town, it's his estimation that were it not for, for Brian, the FNM might have won Bamboo Town. Um, so I don't discredit that, um, but I, I would say this. Um, it's also fair to assume that the DNA took votes from PLP. A lot of people um, weren't just rejecting the Ingram administration, they were also rejecting Christie. So they wanted an alternative and they voted for an alternative. If the DNA wasn't there, the PLP's margin of victory might have been greater. Strawn says he could also see where the DNA might have cost the FNM some traditionally safe seats. For example, in Mount Moriah, DNA candidate Wayne Monroe received 471 votes. In that area, the PLP's Arnold Forbes beat FNM incumbent Tommy Turnquest by just 250 votes. In Bamboo Town, DNA leader Randall McCartney got 1,022 votes. However, the PLP's Renward Wells only beat FNM candidate Cassius Stewart by 279 votes. 
In Fort Charlotte, DNA candidate Mark Humes got 519 votes. However, the PLP's Dr. Andre Rollins beat FNM candidate Chirago Lang by just 152 votes. In the end, though, Strawn believes the DNA did not cause the FNM's loss. Some of its choices did. I believe ultimately the free national government government's um, decisions, its policies, um, its choices hurt it. And that is why they were voted out. I don't want to give the DNA too much credit for the defeat of, of the FNM. The Bahamian people decided um, 10,000 of them more voted PLP than FNM. So let, let's not discredit the PLP. The DNA won no seats in Monday's general election, but Strawn says it had the support needed to hurt two political giants. Not to mention, the one-year-old party made history by garnering the most votes ever for a third party in the Bahamas. He says he doesn't only think about what would have happened if the DNA was never launched, but what could have happened if McCartney had been able to attract other third-party leaders who eventually joined the FNM and PLP, like Cassius Stewart, Andre Rollins, and Renward Wells. How much more of an impact could the DNA have had if others who were expressing disenchantment not so long ago with both parties stuck to their guns, unified, and really gave people a truly viable third option. So uh, the question for me going forward is, what happened to the DNA? Was this just an opportunity to showcase what you could do so you could shop your shares to one of the two major parties? Or are you committed to a lifelong um, journey as the Democratic National Alliance? Strawn says traditionally third parties have fizzled. He says we'll have to wait and see if the DNA suffers a similar fate. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie. Well, DNA leader Branville McCartney today responding to talk that the DNA may have helped to determine the outcome of the general election. In the days following the election, McCartney says he's received calls and emails blaming him and the DNA for the demise of the FNM. He says the fact is the Bahamian people determined what kind of leader they wanted, and it was not Hubert Ingram. Rather, McCartney says the FNM ought to look internally instead of blaming the DNA for Monday's loss. The DNA is now conducting its own assessment of the general election to determine what the party ought to do differently in the future. As for speculation that McCartney may be offering himself in the impending North Abaco by-election, McCartney says party executives will meet this weekend and make a determination as to whether the DNA will contest the seat and who the candidate would be. Meanwhile, McCartney thanked Bahamians who supported the DNA over the past 11 months and congratulated the new leader of opposition business, Dr. Hubert Minnis, on his new post.